and welcome to this tutorial on extruding 3D text in After Effects. Now there are plenty of solutions to extruding 3D text and shapes in After Effects and many of them have been spoken about before on the cow. For instance there's a quite an old tutorial now by Taylor Woodrell and also one by Aaron Rabinowitz both of which you can learn quite a lot from and as Aaron said we learn from people who go before us and I'm going to be picking up on what these guys have said and also doing a follow-on to them the difference being with mine that I'll be demonstrating the simple expression that makes the duplication process a lot quicker and I'll be demonstrating a slightly different approach to the shatter effect which is a very quickly rendering solution plus adding textures to the side and the front and just having a general play with that and then I want to look at the plugin Zaxworks which is a plugin that's specifically for very high quality 3D text and shapes and lastly talking about 3D applications which are very expensive and very high end and some of the advantages and disadvantages between say Zaxworks and the high end stuff so that you can know what's going to be best for you. Now I want to start with a duplication approach I don't want to spend a long time in each one of these but I do want to be able to demonstrate them so that you can use them in your own applications as quickly as possible. Now the duplication approach is probably one of the better known ones. What you want to do is create a layer and then duplicate it with each layer going back in 3D space by a certain amount so that from the front and a little bit from the side and the top and the back it looks like it's extruded 3D text. So how do you do that? Let me demonstrate including the expression. So firstly you need to create some text or a shape. So we can type in here something exciting like text. Very imaginative I can tell. And then the first thing we want to do is not start duplicating this layer but pre-compose it. In other words we're going to put it in if you like a see-through envelope. And that envelope is going to be duplicated multiple times but the contents remains the same. It's what we've got in this particular composition. So that all we need to do is change the contents of one envelope and all the envelopes are updated if that makes sense. So we're going to pre-compose the layer and then use that pre-composed layer as the item that we duplicate. So all we need to do with this layer is select it and then go to layer pre-compose and then move all attributes to a new composition and we're going to call this composition source text or in fact we'll just call it source because we'll do some shapes later as well. So call it source and click OK. Now it is this layer that we are going to duplicate. So the first thing we need to do is make sure it's 3D because obviously to duplicate it we want to send it back in 3D space and then we need to apply an expression, a very simple expression to the position properties. So select the layer and hit P on your keyboard for position and there we have the position properties. Now Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac click the stopwatch next to position so that we can write an expression and this is the expression open square brackets then you take the pick whip here and you pull it out and you bring it around to the X properties and let go so what we're saying is on this layer whatever X is let it be that and that's what it's given us here and we put a comma and then we take the pick whip and we move it around to the Y property and we let go and put a comma so at the moment we said okay for this expression whatever X is let it be that whatever Y is let it be that but for our Z property we need to write this we go index I N D E X minus one and then we close square bracket now what is index minus one well index is what's called a reserved word which means it has a specific meaning and index always refers to this number here the layer number so what I'm saying is whatever this layer is go minus one so it's 1 minus 1, so it'll be 0 in Z space. That's what the expression is saying, which means that if I start to duplicate this layer multiple times, every layer is going to be a higher number. So the next layer will be layer number 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. So we're going to start to build up our layers in Z space. So I'm going to hit return on my numpad, not on my keyboard, to apply the expression. And then I'm going to twirl it up, select the layer, and duplicate it 20, 25 times, however many you want. So the quick way of duplicating is Control D or Command D on the Mac. So Control D for me on a PC, I'm going to do 20, 25 times. Let go, and already you can kind of see that there's some sort of extrusion there. If you want to see it, really the best thing we can do is create a camera. So layer, new camera and the 50mm presets fine, click OK 
and then select the camera layer, choose the Unify Camera Tool, and then right click, and we can start to orbit around. Now, if it orbits in a weird way, and you want it to orbit directly on the text, what you do is you go back, open up the camera layer, and click Reset, and then you can choose the Unified Camera Tool and start to move around, and you'll see that it's actually centered on the item now. So now we have something that kind of looks 3D. If I stop and let it render, it's reasonably interesting, it's fairly good, it's reasonably fast to change. Of course the problem is, as Aaron has shown before and Rob before him, if you get right to the edge, you're going to look really weird and you'll be able to see that it's not 3D, it's just lots of layers. So you can't push this one too far, but you can still get some very good results going from quite a wide angle one side to the other. So it's quite a good way of creating 3D text. Now, by taking this particular approach, you can also save yourself quite a lot of work. Rather than creating something really complex in your source composition, you can add any texturing or any special effects you want just to the top layer, saving a lot of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my top layer, and I'm going to go to Effect, Generate, Ramp, to create a ramp on that top layer. And then I'm gonna change the colors of my ramp, make that one a fairly dark blue, and make the other one a cyan, I think. Nice light cyan. And I'm gonna change my start of the ramp and my ends of the ramp. So my start of the ramp, I'm gonna bring just above my text. And the end of my ramp, I'm gonna bring just below my text to give a nice look to it. And then what we can do is we can add in some beveling effects. So for instance, we could go to Effect, and we could go to Perspective, and then we could choose Bevel Alpha, and then we could actually bevel up the alpha, move the edge thickness up, begin to create quite an interesting look. And then possibly we could add a couple more effects. These are ones that you could add for your own interest. Do have a play, but we could go to, say, Stylize, and we could add, say, Color Emboss, gives another fairly interesting look and the one that I particularly like to apply would be effect stylize CC glass which initially looks kind of weird but then you need to open it and where it says 100 for displacement take that down to 10 and then possibly reduce the overall height a little and then you're just creating something that looks fairly interesting okay and bear in mind that that is just on the top layer and you can turn these on and off to get your own feel whatever works best for you. And still, that renders fairly quickly. So if I choose my camera again, my Unify Camera Tool, that's rendering fairly quickly. The issue you'll then have is shadows. So if we create a layer, Layer New Solid, and make it 3D, let's uh, change its color actually first to say, um, sort of goldy color or yellowy color. Click OK, make sure it's comp size, Call it background or BG. Hit return. Make sure it's 3D. Open up its position. Okay, I'm just going to reset my camera so that we're looking at it from the front on. And I'm going to put it forward in Z space so it kind of goes behind our text. There we go. So it's behind our text. Stretch it out a bit. So it's filling up the screen behind. Now I'm going to create a light to show on the text. So we go layer new light. I'm going to have a spotlight. And I'm going to make it, uh, actually I'll make it quite a light blue. There we go. And that'll do. Click OK. Now at the moment that's not showing any shadows. If I choose my camera, my unified camera tool, and move it around a little bit, you'll see there's no shadows there. So if I want to create shadows, rather than having every single layer creating a shadow, which can be quite render intensive. What I tend to do is go to the bottom layer and then open up the materials option. So you hit AA, alternatively you twirl it down and you open up materials options at the bottom and then where it says cast shadow you turn it to on and then there is one shadow from that last layer. And if you want that shadow to be stronger or weaker or however you want it to be then you actually need to be able to move all these layers backwards and forwards together so what you would do is select the layer the first layer that's actually part of your source text and the last layer and then you pre-compose those so layer pre-compose and move all attributes to a new composition and call it final text 
OK. And then we need to collapse the transformations. So you need to click this little checkbox here to collapse the transformations so that we can actually see it in this composition. But now we can also move them. So if you hit P for position and make it 3D, we can move it forward or we can move it backwards. And then we can see the shadow. And if the shadow is too hard for you, which that is for me, I can double click on the light layer, open it up, and I can make the shadow darkness far less, and I can make its softness far greater. Click OK, and then you get a better look for the shadows. Incidentally, if your shadows aren't high enough quality for you, and you want a much higher quality shadow, you go to Composition, Composition Settings, and then you go to Advanced, and then you go to Options, and then it says shadow map resolution and at the moment it's comp size but you really can make them very very high quality by selecting something up at the two three four thousand it's not really going to show on this particular one but there is a render hit so having done that it's going to produce a really high quality shadow but it's also going to have a massive render hit as you can see it's taking quite a long time and so now if i try and move things around you see it's much much slower all because of the render hit with a shadow so if you do this with shadows you make sure everything is right first and then the very last thing you do before you render out composition composition settings advanced options and then you take your shadow resolution as high as possible but for normal work leave it at comp size or else as you see there will be a big render hit now for text at this kind of distance that looks pretty good if you actually zoom in you'll see that you've got quite a lot of aliased edges um, and it's pixelated but you know you have to get fairly close in before you'd actually start to see that so for quite a lot of applications this is something that can work quite well and you can produce some pretty stunning results that people will not really notice the other thing is if we now go back to our original source composition so I'm going to open up my source composition where it says source where I've got my text in here and now I'm going to use my shape tool here and I'm going to choose say the star and I'm going to draw a little star down here I'm going to move it by holding the space bar so just move it to one side okay and I'm going to select that and I'm going to just going to duplicate the poly star and I'm going to take that second poly star and I'm just going to move it across so we've got two nice little stars outlining our text now if I go back to my main composition duplication give it a moment to update you'll see that I've actually got two stars. I'm going to pull my light out a bit now. So I'm going to select my light and pull it out a bit so we can see things a bit more clearly. And I'm going to select my camera and hit my unified camera tool, the C key on my keyboard, and start to pull it around and you'll see that I've actually got 3D stars, 3D shape layers. So whatever shapes you make are going to be added to the final composition and they too will render as 3D items. Now you can see with those effects that we apply to the top layer, it's also affecting the top layer of the star and it's looking really cool. Now I'm going to go back to the source composition and I'm going to delete what's in there. Just delete it and I'm going to create a new poly star. So there's my star and I'm going to turn off my fill. So by clicking the fill button here and clicking off, and click OK. So at the moment all I have is a stroke and I'm going to make my stroke uh, a yellow colour I think, something a little bit more exciting than white and I'm going to create my poly star so just click and drag hold the space bar to move it into position and if you let go of the space bar and hold the control key you can change the length of the arms but that's fine okay so I've created the poly star we know that it will be duplicated as a 3D item and there it is and it's actually got the gradient that we applied on that top layer so it doesn't matter what color I was going to make it that's still going to do that we've got a nice shadow so that's great go back to the source now let's open up our polystar let's open up our polystar path and let's just play around so let's have a few more points and let's uh, pull in the inner radius pull out the outer radius let's change the inner roundness this is one of those things that you just have to play with and I know for myself I play with this quite a lot actually I'm going to turn it down from 15 I'm going to go down to 6 pixels so it's quite small, it's great, Pixel, I've changed it up here in the, the top of the panel. And then we can add a few effects. So where it says contents polystar, we could add say, pucker and bloat. 
and then we can actually open up pucker and bloat down here in the timeline and then we can change how much we pucker and bloat it to create some really beautiful effects now notice if I go with that one just for that sort of effect if I now go back to my duplication there it is duplicated as a 3d item hit my camera tool again it's a 3d item now it's got yellow edges and I'm against a yellow solid so I'm actually going to open up my solid and change it so go layer solid settings let's make that a blue now shall we uh, or maybe a, a magenta of some sort yeah, that'll do whatever so it's clear there we go so you can see that we've actually got a 3d item the blue and cyan that you can see is the ramp that we put on the very top layer in our final composition when we did all that duplication so we've created something pretty interesting however we can do more so we could then go back to our source composition and we could add trim paths now trim paths is one of those fun effects that you can add because what we can do with trim paths is we can literally trim the paths so we can actually have the whole thing coming on so if let's say we start this at a hundred at the beginning and then go forward two seconds if you don't want to see this by the way you can turn off the mask here so it's just toggling the actual original mask so that we don't have to see it and then I can go from 100 to 0 and we've created an animation now if we go back to our duplication composition we now have our 3d item animating on over two seconds with shadow looking seriously cool and that's all done through duplication which is a really fun way of producing some very interesting shapes and text in a 3d way in the next tutorial I'm going to demonstrate the shatter effect and how we can create some really exciting and fun 3d items with that my name's Andrew Davis. thank you for watching Thank you.